Welcome into the CHGO Blackhawks podcast presented by DraftKings Sportsbook, America's top-rated sportsbook. Download the app and use that promo code CHGO when you sign up. Happy Wednesday. It's Wednesday. I mean, it was Wednesday when the show was ended yesterday. It was Wednesday yesterday. last night, too. <laughs> last night. <laughs> Second show of the day. Yeah, right? <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. Fucking I'm Jason Wosky with Greg Boyson and Mario Tirabasi. Today, we are going to reveal, if you did not read it, on allchgo.com, and you should have, uh, Mario's Draft Board 1.0. We're going to talk about uh, which Blackhawks are available, which Blackhawks have value, and who are the most, um, I don't know, appealing Blackhawks on the trade market as the March fourth deadline approaches march 3rd march 3rd deadline approaches i knew that it was there's another deadline on march 4th or anniversary rather that's right look at that then um but before we get started make sure you smash that like button on the youtube channel make sure you're subscribed as well if you're listening on the podcast app that's cool too make sure you're subscribed or following us there as well and Leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Literally takes uh, 30 seconds to do and really helps us out a ton when you do that. And every now and again, I like to remind people that a four-star review is basically a zero-star review. So don't do that. (laughs) It's five or nothing. So please leave us a five-star review on your preferred uh, podcast app. So before we get rolling, uh, we were texting before the show and chatting before the show. And Mario caught a little something from Frank Saravalli. As it pertains to Jake McCabe. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, we've been talking about the Blackhawks potentially having a defenseman on the move, Connor Murphy, Jake McCabe, one of those guys. And it looks like now this is this is all qualified as, as Frank Saravalli's information, but uh, it looks like Jake McCabe <clears throat> could be getting a lot of uh, interest on the trade market. Uh, Saravalli reported that Edmonton has called. The LA Kings have called, and the Toronto Maple Leafs have called uh, about uh, about McCabe and Murphy as well. But McCabe, more or less, seems to be a, the the bigger target. With I think with good reason. Um, and what we've been hearing about McCabe is, oh well, he has a seven team no trade list, and why seven teams? Well, there's seven teams in Canada, and this is this is according to Saravalli. This isn't silly, silly, make it up. Toronto is not part of that seven-team list. So it is not all of the Canadian teams, uh, in fact, that are on McCabe's list. Uh, so look, if, I, if I'm the Maple Leafs, a team that needs help on defense, uh, and they want to come to Chicago, and uh, the, the Kyle D's want to make up from last, <laughs> last year's uh, trade deadline snafu, uh, look, I, McCabe makes all the sense for the Maple Leafs to, to, to go and, and help their defensive depth. Um, he's a guy that could play pretty much in any NHL top four. Yeah. And two, he has two years left on his contract after this season at $4 million. Uh, he is well worth that. But um, the Blackhawks are going to have some money to work with or some salary cap space to work with. Uh, you can only retain on a certain number amount of contracts. I think it's three. So well, depending gonna, on yeah. what happens with, you know, Kane and Tays, you know, this, this may or may not be uh, an option, but they could retain on Jake McCabe, make him two million, a uh, two million dollar player for Toronto, like a team that needs help with the cap. Could you get a first round pick out of them for that? A, a, a top four defenseman at two million dollars for the next two years. I mean, if you're I think the that's Leafs. a very intriguing your Option. window is now. Austin Matthews is a free agent in two years. Uh, not saying they can't re-sign him, but it's going to be tough. They've got some big decisions to make. Well, it's Matthews or, or Marner. Or Marner. One of the two. They're losing one of them. Yeah. And Nylander, too. Yeah. So this is the time. And draft picks are great and are important and all those things. But the goal here is to win the Stanley Cup. And this is the Leafs' best chance to win a Stanley Cup probably in – my lifetime, or at least in my hockey fandom, bless you. Um, this is their best shot. And draft picks be damn, man. They have the longest cold streak in the in hockey. They are the arguably the biggest and most popular franchise in the game. This yeah. is their shot. Sounds, and bringing in Jake McKay for two million bucks for two years, that's a no brainer to that me. That sounds like the same conversation we had about Marc Andre Fleury in the well, Maple Leafs last year. And Kyle Dubas proved he didn't have the sack to to pull off that kind of deal but 
this year could be different because it's the last year of his contract. He's a lame duck mm-hmm. right And now. he could say, screw it. I don't give an F about the future around here because I probably won't be back right? unless I win a Stanley Cup. So that being said, he's probably going to be a little more gutsy this time around. However, we need to stop the whole, we're going to get Matthew Nyes for Jake McCabe. That's not going to happen. No. I no. mean, I know Sarah Volley said that, like, in a report that, they have interest in Tur- in McCabe, comma Matthew Nyes is not untouchable. Those are it was not, two separate thoughts. Well, yes, yeah, yes. they were not. <laughs> Period. If, paragraph. If he's willing to give Matthew Nyes for Jake McCabe, they need to like fire him immediately because that. No, they don't. They well, need to make that trade and then fire him. <laughs> True. Yeah, exactly. But like, so I know, like they saw McCabe and Nyes in the same sentence, and people were like. Hey, separate thoughts. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah, that would be an amazing deal, but it's not going to happen. Like, you want to do some crazy stuff where you figure out a way to pack to, uh, you know, add a Jonathan Taves and a, and a Jake McKay. Maybe I don't think you can Patrick make that money work. <laughs> no, the, the, no. You, so like, but yeah, I know uh, people saw the Nyes stuff. Mentioned in the same tweet as McCabe, and some people got excited. It's just, it's not going to happen. That would be great. Like, well, and, and like N- Nyes would be a guy that would be traded for a Bo Horvat. Yeah, somebody like that, not not your second line defender. Yeah, and and I think, you know, again, this was Sarah Valli kind of putting his his guesstimations on things, but he was saying that if. If the Blackhawks were to retain and, and, and Toronto were to make a deal for, for McCabe at $2 million per year with retained money, they Blackhawks could probably get a first-round pick out of that. If there was no retained money, you could look at Toronto giving up a second-round pick and a B-level prospect. Now, that's not, that's not Matthew Nyes, right. but maybe a guy who's playing locally right now, Nick Moldenhauer, who we liked from the Chicago Steel uh, going into this year's draft. Like That could be someone that the Blackhawks could could get in that kind of deal a second round pick a, a mid-level prospect and and make it worth so that's interesting and and the definition of b-level depends on who you talk to for sure because yeah. i think there are some people that would say lucas reichel is a b-level prospect he's not a sure thing looks good so far hasn't totally proven it at the nhl level yet mm-hmm. um you know it doesn't probably doesn't project to superstar status probably Good to very good status. Yeah. Right? So would that be considered a B-level prospect? If that's the case, yes. I'd almost rather do that, a second and that, Mm -hmm. than a first. Right. Two assets instead of one. But if it's a first this year. Yeah. uh, There's still lottery tickets, though. Right. How many times have we gone back and looked at first rounds, you know, through the years and said, oh, oh, good. It's also currency, though. I mean, if if, if you were to make this kind of deal... And, and you make it so a, a team like Toronto or Edmonton or L.A., or the, the teams that have been reportedly really interested in Jake McCabe, if you were to get a first-round pick out of, those, uh, out of those teams, you're talking about late teens, 20s, you know, depending on where they, where they end up in the postseason. But you could package that with Tampa's pick. Two, two picks in the 20s to get into the early teens. Like, you could do something like that. Like, it's, there's, there's a lot of flexibility that Kyle Davidson could have you make like two top ten picks maybe in this draft. It's realistic. It's uh, the the <laughs> the possibilities are endless. Yeah, two top ten picks. Like you know, let's let's ride. Like let's let's yeah. go. Like that's that gets me excited. Yeah, I, I know. I I kind of like the idea of a prospect and a second round pick because um, you already got two first round or second round picks. So that's three yeah. in the second round. So again. Mm-hmm. You could start packing those. You could package two of those three. If there's a guy early second round, you have to have. He's on your board, and you could package two of those picks to move up and then get the prospect. Because at some point, as we've said, the Hawks need to start getting guys that are quicker, to that, that are going to be closer to being actual NHL players than guys you take in the first through sixth round this year. You got to right. get guys that could play for Rockford next year and possibly – the Blackhawks as soon as next year or the following. You got to start getting some actual prospects that can be in your organization playing professionally in the next year. Yeah, I agree with that. Mm-hmm. But we're, you know, what's interesting about the Sarah Valley report is we're, we could really be looking at a, a scenario where Jake McCabe is the Hawks' biggest trade deadline asset. 
Because when you factor in the low salary, the term, mm-hmm. uh, all that stuff, like Patrick Kane, sure, is the biggest name for sure, right? But it's going to take a lot to get him. You're going to have to, he's done after this year. You got to make the cap money fit so you're limited to how many teams can afford him, not to mention limited to how many teams he wants, he to, wants go to. to go to. Right. Right. So that limits the value in return. So there's a shot that like Jake McCabe could bring back the biggest haul of this trade deadline, which would be crazy to think about. But mm-hmm. there's there seems to be massive demand for Jake McCabe, and I would love to know who that seventh team is. Right. The, yeah. The non-Canadian if team. It's, if it's six Canadian teams, not it's, Toronto and someone else. Let's just pretend it's the Blues. Yeah, I was just gonna say it's St. Louis. <laughs> could it be St. Louis? Yeah. Maybe it's Buffalo. Maybe he doesn't want to go back there. Yeah, it could been be. there, done that. Yeah, been yeah. there, been there, done that. I mean, hey, what do you want to go back team. now? And they're like, maybe. In a playoff, I don't know. Who knows? Well, but we should maybe try and find that out. Who that other team I'm, is? Yes, let's I, ask him. I tried. <laughs> I tried a little bit today to reach out to some sources, and from what I've, everyone's very tight lipped right now. Sure, um, which is understandable. So it's probably one of those things we'll find out after the trade was made. Yes, right. When it doesn't yeah. matter anymore. Yeah, um, yeah. It's we should. Just, yeah, it's just fun, man. It's a fun time of year. I love transactions. I love drafts. I love free agency. Mm-hmm. And uh, trade deadlines. This this one's going to be this is the biggest one they've had in decades. In a in a yes, in a very long time. This is just going to dictate the future of their franchise. Yeah, and and two two players really uh, holding a lot of, if not all of the cards for it right now. Because you know we talked a little bit about it last night, but Jonathan Taze and Patrick Kane they they've had a very long time to contemplate their futures. Um, for our, for argument's sake since the summer but like you could you, you can talk about going back to this time last year the writing was on the wall that the team was bad last year yeah that they were going to be trading all you know as as much as they uh could at the trade deadline and then into the summer making moves getting rid of Debrinket and doc and not bringing back strom and kubalik and um like so i would say that they've almost had a year to kind of think about what is my future with this organization? And now we're coming down to the trade deadline being what five weeks away. Kyle Davidson needs some time to figure out, you know, the the finer points of his trade deadline plan, and if it is going to involve Jonathan Taze and Patrick Kane, and if it if it is, they can't say the morning of March third, hey, you know what, we've made our decision. <laughs> yeah, we need to be traded. Like, no, okay, well now now it's screwed. The trade market's already probably by that time has already been set. Uh, and for the Blackhawks, like there are going to be teams that need. Obviously, there's teams that need help at center and 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 at wing, and the Blackhawks don't want to go into their into their trade deadline plans being like, well, we can give you Max Domi, but not knowing what the the future is for Taze and Kane. If they could go to a team and say, well, Patrick Kane and Jonathan Taze are available, you could get a bigger haul from that team. You, you don't want to sell yourself short if those guys end up wanting a trade. So, you know, we've heard the reports. They're going to have this meeting in January. Here we are. It's the it's final February, week yeah. of January, and we have heard nothing yeah. about this meeting. Except now it's February. February. Yeah, and now, it, now yeah. it's all, well, their decisions are going to be mid-February. Like, it's all up in the air. Um so look, like they're they're in, you know they're they're on their on their road trip right now. Uh, Kyle Davidson is 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 traveling out on the road trip with the team. Pat Brisson, I believe, is a worldly man. He can get on a plane and get out there. And if they need to rent a book a conference room at the local DoubleTree or whatever, <laughs> and hammer out these details, like let's get this meeting going. You've got a bye week coming up. And an all-star break. There'll be no practices getting in the way. There'll be no yeah. team activities getting in the way. Enough is enough. Sit down and figure it out. Yeah. If you want, if you guys want to stay, great. Just get it out there so we can move on and yeah. and prepare for the rest of the year. Yeah. It, it's time to, you know, to to make your moves, to make your decisions. Because, yeah, you're not going to be able to facilitate a, a trade for Patrick Kane or Jonathan Taze where you're talking complications with salary cap and, and retentions and possibly third teams get, having to yeah. get involved. You can't just snap your fingers and put something like that together. You right. need time 
to do that. Plus, you know, you don't know how many teams you're going to get the luxury of talking to. We could talk all we want about what teams are interested in Patrick Kane. If he doesn't want to play there, that trade's not going to happen. He may, he may just say, I only want to go to one team. Yeah. And if that team doesn't want him or can't afford him or, or can't give you his value, well, then you're getting nothing. Well, see, that, and that's the other thing, too, is like we saw last year with Dylan Strom, obviously not the same player as Patrick Kane, but like the Hawks' best offer was, it was like a six-round pick. Yeah. And they're just like, well, no, we'll just keep him. Like, right. We're not going to just trade him just to trade him. And doing right by the player. Right. But then if Kane and Taves say, well, we want it, like we're ready to move on, trade us, do you owe them a trade? See, that's the other thing. If, if they say, okay, we've decided we want to be traded, do you let the deadline pass and say, we didn't get enough for you? We didn't get a big enough offer for you, so we're keeping you. Then what happens? No, I, th- I think because you have the process of them waiving that no movement clause, that's going to be everywhere. So, yeah. I, so I, if you, if they come to you and say I'm I'm making this contractual decision to get rid of this clause so that you can trade me, if Kyle Davison then doesn't, I think that's a huge well, I, I think that's yeah. a huge problem. Because with Strom, too, he didn't have any protections. Right. So it was just like, well, we didn't just want to ship him somewhere that he had no say in for n- almost nothing in return. Yeah. They were like, well. Will do him some justice, let him play out the season, and then figure it out for himself in the summer. For these guys, like if they say we want to be traded, I, you you at that point you have to do it. And Even, and yeah. maybe if you if you get a shitty return, it's better than nothing. It's better and, than letting them walk for nothing. Exactly. Yeah, like you can live with saying, "Well, you let Dylan Strom go for nothing. Well, we weren't going to get anything for him." Right. So you can't say, "Well, we let." Patrick Kane walk for nothing. That's that's not going to look good. Yeah. Well, keep in mind, too, that while we don't know, agents work back channels. They've got an idea of what teams would be interested. They sure. kn- Pat Brisson knows which teams Jonathan Taze and Patrick Kane would play for. He knows that today. Oh, absolutely. He probably knew that six months ago. He probably knew that a year ago, whatever. Mm-hmm. So he's probably working those back channels, talking to GMs. Hey, what kind of a package could you put together? Let me talk. They, it all kind of works in concert. You know, it's not as like cut and dry as like trade us. Oh, yeah. where would you like to be traded? When when Kyle did, when they when he right. gets the official like okay, if and when he gets the the, the, the we're gonna waive this deal, he's gonna know exactly where he needs to start looking. Like yeah. it, nothing is gonna catch him off guard. Exactly. Right? I don't think there are no there are no secrets. Uh, you know, many secrets behind the curtain in professional sports. Yeah, so. and you can piece together you know, a couple puzzle pieces and say, well, this team would make sense and this team yeah. would make sense and, you know, All get right, an well, idea of that. Let's get to your big board uh, in the next segment. But first, I want to remind everybody about Green Ridge Farm. They are a Chico- Chicago local meat and cheese company offering you a better all-natural option. The amazing deli meats. Get that Caminito ham. Even the, even the deli paper is good. I know from experience. <laughs> their sausages, their famous meat sticks, perfect for tailgating happy hour, school lunches, all those things. The meat sticks, which are incredible, are all natural and hardwood smoked for eight hours with 16 grams of protein per stick. They make a perfect post-shoveling snack. Mm. Meat sticks come in chicken, black forest beef, and flavors like jalapeno cheddar, and my absolute favorite, the spicy chili. If you haven't tried these yet, you don't know what you're missing. They are absolutely incredible. Uh, They got the deli meats at the Jules, at the Pete's, at the Costco's, all those places, you can find the, uh, the the meat sticks at Costco, the giant pack of the meat sticks. That'll get you through for a while. Sam's Club as well, or, of course, your Chicagoland grocery store. Right now, order any three meat products at GreenRidgeFarm.com and include a pack of meat sticks in your cart. Those meat sticks will be free simply by using code CHGO at checkout. Green Ridge Farm, Simply Natural Meat. I uh, was dragging my daughter around in her little sled. Uh, after our meeting today out in the snow, and she was absolutely loving it. So that was a lot of fun. And it was my first experience being a, a snow a sledding dad, and my quads were killing me. <laughs> so the post-workout snack uh, definitely was going to uh, come in handy from uh, Green Ridge there today. So I always, I always thought about that. I was just like, oh, well, you know. <laughs> Why did my dad <laughs> always like need a nap after going sledding? Now I get it. He was yep. pulling us up and down hills, uh, up up uphill both ways. Uh, but you know, it's what you do. Uh, what also 
uh, helps after a day of uh, dragging a sled around is some delicious Goose Island beverages. Oh, yeah. And uh, we, if you uh, haven't noticed, are, brought, are, are uh, sponsored and supported by the Goose Island Beer Company, <laughs> Chicago's <laughs> beer, since 1988. Hong Kong. A couple, uh, couple late... <laughs> Late geese getting, uh, getting, <laughs> getting south for the winter. But uh, Goose Island, of course, has their incredible deep beer roster, deeper than any Stanley Cup contender out there. Of course, the Blackhawks Pale Ale, which you can see front and center on your screen there, the limited release uh, Blackhawks Pale Ale, perfect for celebrating the very few wins that come this season and perfect for forgetting the many losses and will be perfect for when the ping pong balls uh, come in our favor for Connor Bedard later this year to celebrate. Of course, also limited release, the Bulls City 312, which is a great looking can. National Beer Can Appreciation Day yesterday. Uh, yeah. Everyone appreciates a good Big day. Can. Almost took the day off. So Goose Island has uh, Goose Island has the roster set. Of course, the uh, Bourbon County Stout for all of you uh, darker beer aficionados, the Bear, the Beer Hug IPA series, Green Line, Matilda, all your favorite beers coming from Goose Island. They are delicious and just good on a nice winter's day. Of course, the 312 as well, the staple of Goose Island. Uh, their two locations are open and ready to welcome you. You can grab a beer right from their innovation tanks at the Goose Island Tap Room at 1800 West Fulton. Or if you prefer to uh, get a nice burger with your beer, you can get one uh, at the Clybourne Brew House, the original Clybourne Brew House at 1800 North Clybourne uh, for reservations. And for pickup orders, go to gooseisland.com slash locations. Again, that is the Goose Island Beer Company, our newest friends at CHGO. All right, Mario wrote about it for allchgo.com this week. The Blackhawks big board. Uh, you've got eight players on the board. Yep. Uh, I think we've talked a lot about Kane, who is your number one, and Taves, who is your number three mm -hmm. at the moment. So should we spend time on the also-rans on your list, the <laughs> non-Taves and non-Kane non players? Non-Taves and non-Kane, sure. Uh, yeah, so right between those two big guys, I got uh, Max Domi. Uh, just because I, I, he's been, we talked about it last night, outside of his... Uh, uh, misjudgments in his physical play last night, um, which cost him 17 minutes and Peter Mrazek, probably a, a headache this morning, but uh, he's been the most effective player that they've had uh, in, in the role that he's been able to play uh, top line center, Max Domi. I don't think we all expect, I don't think any of us expected that when he was uh, brought in here, but he was brought to this team uh, for the purpose of being flipped. He leads the team in points, uh, leads the team in goals and you know, he's, he's a guy that contending teams will want to have. Uh, someone who can play in a depth role, who can score, who can be physical, who can play Stanley Cup playoff hockey. Like, that's, that's a huge thing uh, that contending teams want to make sure that they have on their roster. And like we mentioned, like, there's teams that need help at forward that may not want to pay the big prices that Jonathan Taze, Patrick Kane, Bo Horvat, uh, Timo Meyer, guys like that that are on the market are going to uh, – are going to garner, but but Domi, as this season has gone on, his value has gone up. Could the Blackhawks get a first round pick from Max Domi? I don't think it's the craziest thing to 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 potentially happen, but I wouldn't bank on it. I think if you can, like we were talking about with McCabe, if you could get a second round pick and a mid grade prospect, um, that's that's a win. So here's here's something to think about as we go into this, and obviously the answer will be different for every GM. How much does reputation play a role here? Because people look at Max Domi as a guy who's jumped around, hasn't really been able to stick anywhere, hasn't really been outstanding anywhere. Yeah. Uh, but if you're watching Hawks games and if you're properly scouting Max Domi, you're seeing a guy with incredible value. And on the other hand, are you at the deadline looking at Jonathan Taves and saying, that's Jonathan Taves, three Stanley Cups, gold medals, Conn Smythe, all these things. Yeah. Or are you looking at the guy now? That's the question. And again, it changes GM to GM. If Domi is being properly scouted, I could see him, especially if he keeps this going and, and maintains what he's been doing so far, which why wouldn't he? Um, I could see him really garnering a lot of interest at the deadline because he's affordable. Three million if the Hawks don't need any salary. 
It's done after this year, so it's it is just a playoff rental. But man, the guy who can play center, can play wing, can play in the power play, can kill penalty, whatever you need him to do, he can do. And I don't know. I I went back and watched a show from this summer before free agency, and we were going through the list. <laughs> and when Max Domi came up, we all went, eh. Yeah. And that's that's the reputation he has. Hopefully, his time here has changed that reputation a little bit because that is exactly what he was intending yeah. when he signed a one-year deal with the Hawks. He wanted to come here, prove that he could be a top-line player, put up the points, and here he is, the Blackhawks' leading scorer. His best career uh, season came when he was with Montreal, which had Luke Richardson on the staff, and that was uh, uh, something that intrigued him about coming to, the, to, to Chicago. And, yeah, having the opportunity to play a, a, a elevated role uh, something that he hasn't really had with other organizations that he's been with, uh, other than maybe Arizona. But you know, I think that was that was a big selling point for him to to come here. And yeah, he's done everything uh, asked of him from from the Blackhawks organization. And you know, off the ice, people the guys love him in the locker room. Yeah, and so that's that's a big factor too. I w- I would say, you know, it's 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 a mixture of both. You know, the reputation and the current play. But I, I don't think he's – I think when you factor in both, you look at the way he's playing, I don't think there's any reason a GM should necessarily be afraid of bringing him in, especially for, for – it's you're just bringing him in for three months. Like, yeah. I, I didn't, no, he's I, not a Tom You're, you're not investing in him. Yeah. He's not a liability where you he's one stupid move away from getting suspended for five games. He's not one of those guys. No. Um, we'll, we'll look, um, you know, what's a good turn for Domi? That's what no raids, uh, no Roy, whatever, you know who he the is. The original. Yes, the original one. There's too many. Too the OG. Much, too much roids and rage bouncing around these chat rooms lately. <laughs> um, last season, Columbus, in 53 games, he had nine goals, 23 assists, only 77 shots on goal. In 46 games for the Hawks, he's got 14 goals, 19 assists 105 shots so he was not having a great year last year and he he was traded to carolina at the deadline as part of a three-team deal columbus got a mid-level defensive prospect in return for max domi last Mm -hmm. year so that's that's only a year ago now granted he's been much better this year yeah but he's also playing in an elevated role he was never the columbus's top line center last year no i don't think a team that's going to acquire him at the deadline is looking for him to be a top line center so you got to keep that in mind even with the numbers jumped up you know i wouldn't i wouldn't think you would get a huge return now maybe that can change Teams get desperate. A team gets an injury right before the deal, or a team misses out on you know your Bo Horvats, your Jonathan Taves, all your these bigger names, and then maybe they say, well, we got to get somebody, and that drives up the price a little bit. I mean, right now, if some team offered me a second round pick for Max Domi, I am taking it in, Take a, it in, a, in, a, in a heartbeat, a and mm-hmm. not yeah. even. So, I would think that's a best case scenario right now is a second round pick, maybe you know, a third and a mid-level prospect, you know, a B prospect and a third. Sure. Something I wouldn't be thinking about getting a first-round pick for Max Domi at this point. Now, we have a month before the deadline. Things can change. But my my advice is to temper the expectations on the Max Domi return. Things can change over the next four weeks. But just based on what he pulled last year, and based on, you know, a lot of uh, other things, like Toronto Maple Leafs aren't going to call Max Domi to be their top-line center. So no. you're not going to pay the price right. for a top-line line. Just because he's the number one center here, he's probably going to be a third-line center or winger wherever he's going. So they're yeah. not – those teams aren't going to pay for a number one center. They're going to pay for what they're going to use him for. So look, that's going to take the price down. right? If you look at his playoff stats, 2019-2020 uh, uh, – 2020, in Montreal, played 10 playoff games, had three assists, averaging 14 minutes of ice time. So that's third playoff line. Playoff games. Right? And then you've got uh, last season with Carolina, played 14 games, three goals, three assists, but only playing 10 minutes per game. He was that's on their like fourth a fourth line. line role. He was on their fourth yeah. line. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, that's, that's really what Max Domi is to a contender. But, you know, hopefully with what he has shown this year in Chicago, teams will look at him in a different way because, again, getting back to the reputation thing – 
like my thoughts on Max Domi before he was a Hawk were kind of like malcontent, bit of a head case, kind of a problem, bad penalties, underachiever, all those sort of things. Mm -hmm. And he's been anything but those things this season, save for his two brain malfunctions with the uh, misconducts that he's had this season. Yeah. Other than that, he's been really good. Yeah, we've gotten frustrated that he's not shooting, but okay, no player is perfect. Other than that, he's been a complete success. Yeah. Yeah, he's 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 definitely come in and and uh played played above expectation and I think, you know, teams looking at teams looking at that, you know, that he's playing a top line center center role. I think they can they're not going to say, "Oh, well, he's going to be our top line center." But they can know, okay, here's a guy that can play up and down the lineup if we need him to play an elevated role. He can do it because he's done it all season. He's played 18 plus minutes a night. He's played with, you know, the best players on the roster consistently. He's played on the power play. Um, he's, he's able to do that. He's not coming in as, well, here's a guy that we're kind of taking a chance on. Let's stick him on the fourth role, fourth line and see what he can do. This is a player that could step into a third line role, second line role, whatever you need him to do. There could be a team that, you know, in, in the next few weeks has an injury. And it's just like shoot. Now our second line right wing is gone. Yep. You know, and 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 they have to they have to fill that uh, spot. So there's, I, I think what he has proven this season is that he can be a versatile player, and that if you ne- if you need him to play center, what he's done this year is is imp- is impressive at the center position. Like he he came into the year as kind of a center, kind of a wing. Uh, and was under what forty five percent at the faceoff dot in the two like full seasons he played center. He's at fifty five percent this year. Yeah. Like that's that's impressive. All right, let's move on to the next part of the list. We talked about Jonathan Taze. We spent the first part of the show talking about Jake McCabe. That's three and four on your list. Coming in at number five is Andreas Athanasiu. Yeah, a lot like Domi came in for on an identical contract for the exact same reason uh, of of being flipped at at the trade deadline. Um, he's been fine. He's, you know what? I'll, I'll, I'll put it, I'll put a little bit better of a, of a spin on it. Andres Tennessee. He has been exactly what we expected him to be. <laughs> he is fast. He is not afraid to just get the puck and take it to the net. And he is not great at finishing those chances. Right. And you know, it's we, at the United center once a night, you will hear the crowd go, oh, oh. <laughs> and without looking up from our our computers, we can go, well, that was a fantasy. Yep. And, and or it's, maybe one in ten is Blackwell. Yes, sometimes <laughs> it's Colin Blackwell. Um, but, you know, it, the, there's definitely an element uh, that he brings to a contending team that makes him an, an attractive piece. Uh, the speed, of course, is, is his biggest uh, attribute. And... You know, I wrote about it in the piece. Like he could be someone who plays on a on a third or fourth line as a speed option, as a guy who's just you know can just break a game, get a breakaway, and and have a scoring chance like that uh, at an important time. He's also a guy that you could put on the penalty kill. The Blackhawks have tried it a few times this season. Put him on the penalty kill and use his speed as a weapon against against the team's power play. Uh, the, the the trend. In, in hockey in the last couple of years has to try and, and make your penalty kill a little bit more uh, about counterattacking and a little bit less of just weathering the two-minute storm. Um, he's a guy that could do that. And I think, you know, if, if there's a contending team that wants to maybe add that to their uh, to their arsenal, he's a guy that you could look at very cheap to bring in and as a rental and, and be that kind of depth spark plug. Yeah, and, and I think if you have visions of a top three, First, second, or third rounder, no shot. No. No shot. This would be a flyer. This would be either a kind of a throwaway prospect or a late round pick. One this, of those conditional picks. Yeah. Like it's yeah, a fifth like rounder. a conditional third if yeah. they if make we, it to the conference the final Cups, or something. Yeah, rounder. yeah. Otherwise, it's a fifth round. If he like how Mark Andre, Mark Andre Fleury was a first round pick if they won the cup or oh whatever. Remember, the, remember like, the, the press release? Yeah, it's a first round pick <laughs> if they like pick. if they reach the cup final and he wins four games. Like, okay, it's a second then. Yeah, it's like, a second <laughs> round pick. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but yeah, a, a fantasy could could do something like that, and, and something that is, you know, could be part of a Domi deal, could be part of an Athanasiu deal, is. 
maybe not just getting a pick back or a prospect. The Blackhawks can have flexibility with their cap space. They could take a, tr- a garbage contract back with some of these guys and be like, okay, here's Andre Sathanasiu. We'll take your bad contract and your third round pick. And that that could That's, be that could be yeah. you know in in play too with could a lot you, of these guys. Could you possibly see a scenario? Um, you got both of these guys on identical deals where you trade them both to the same team. A team that's really looking to bolster their bottom six. Sure. Why you not? get them both to some team, and then you sweeten the deal for both of them. You know? if, there's, if there's a team that has that cap room, and... I mean, you don't really need not? a ton of cap room. What are they each at, what, three? Oh, well, they're both three million. Three? All right, yeah. so... I know, the cap room to actual dollars, right. you know, but you just have to be cap <laughs> But, compliant. I mean, it could be an interesting thing. To say, yeah, why not? Maybe that's one of those where you take the the bad money in return and you give them both. And you, yeah, we'll take your bad contract and your second round pick. We'll take we'll Milan Lucic and your second round pick, and here's Domi and Athanasio. Well, sounds good to me. I'll do that. <laughs> see how bad the, be entertaining uh, at least. Yeah, let's let's see how bad the the Canucks want to get rid of Oliver Ekman Larson's contract. Mm. I've always really liked him. That's more. So of they a, can, that's more. Of an so they can bolster their playoff run that they're now on. Right. One and zero under Rick Tockett. Rick Tockett has changed everything. They responded so <laughs> oh, well to the coaching God. staff. <laughs> so Who? I mean, come on. I mean, the Canadian market has never overreacted to anything. No, 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 never. Like, they're right on the money. Oh. Rick Tockett <sighs> has got those Canucks Canucks ready for Canucks. a. Uh, Stanley Cup run here. Hey, we got four NFL teams left, two conference championship games, and only a few more shots to win big on the playoffs with DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. Counting down to Super Bowl 57. Kind of 57 just blows my mind. New customers can bet just $5 and get 200 in free bets instantly. Not a new customer? That's no problem. You could feel... The conference championship thrills with stepped-up same-game parlays. Take your shot in an even bigger NFL payout and boost your winnings with each leg you add up to 100%. I am all in on the 49ers. I just want to see them do well. Rock Purdy. Just because their uniforms are freaking perfect. I don't know. I want, I'd rather, I'm going for the Eagles. I want to see Jalen Hurst win a Super Bowl because we've got a quarterback that's very similar to Jalen Hurts. Yeah, so but seeing him succeed. Philly is just insufferable. It's eh. Not as bad as Boston or New York. I don't want them to win either. Well, too, good thing neither <laughs> of them are in the, in the playoffs anymore. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app. Use the code CHGO. New customers can bet $5 on the conference championships and get 200 in free bets instantly. Listen, you sign up. You put the 5 bucks in. There's another 200 in free bets instantly. Whether you win or lose, it happens immediately. Do it. It's a no-brainer only at DraftKings Sportsbook with code CHGO. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. See the show notes below. Or if you're listening to the podcast on your phone yeah. today for details. Yeah, you know what else Nailed is? It. Got yeah. it. That was good stuff. I'm ready to bet on the 49ers. Um, <laughs> hey, while we, you know. Watching football, tailgating is a part of football, and cornhole is a part of tailgating. And if you want to get yourself the best, coolest looking, most unique cornhole sets, you need to check out Chi Town Custom Cornhole, the number one cornhole provider for Chicagoland and Illinois since 2007. Their signature box style can be digitally printed, covered in vinyl, and painted. Their cornhole boards, or bags, as we like to say in Chicago, Eggs. come with built-in drink holders. You could throw your Goose Island cans in there mm-hmm. while playing a spirited game of bags. Uh, the the uh, drink holders are recessed right in the back, so they're out of the way. You're never going to have another spilled beverage yeah. hit by a wayward bag. I hate getting hit by wayward bags. It's the worst. We all do. Wasn't that a song by Boston, Wayward I, Bags? I anyway, so. mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> they also have LEDs that light up the hole so you can see the hole in the dark, and that's important. And exterior handles for easy carrying and handcrafted scorekeepers. They got these little, like, abacus things. So not only will you not spill your beer, if you've had a few too many beers, you don't even have to, like, keep trying to remember what the score mm-hmm. is. The board will do it for you. They are veteran-owned and operated. They can ship anywhere and also offer local pickups, specializing in corporate designs for your company's next marketing or social event, wedding gifts, and gifts for all occasions, especially for tailgaters 
And barbecue dads, like uh, you have one in your family <laughs> yes, these I days. Do. Today I do. <laughs> My daughter dresses barbecue dad for dress up day at school. She nailed it. it was I am good. offended. Perfect. <laughs> she was wearing all your clothes. Yes, she uh, was. <laughs> go, go check out their website, shytowncornhole.com, and make sure to follow them on Instagram, uh, Instagram at Shytown Custom Cornhole Boards. They got a really cool yes. Instagram account. See on the screen here, our friends at PHNX uh, are also. Uh, with uh, down with it with the Chi Town custom cornhole boards, uh, they got a, a set sent out there, all PHNXed out. Uh, looks great. They look yep. awesome. They are, they did our CHGO boards and they're fantastic. Mm-hmm. See our our look friends over there in PHNX, they got it made. You can because, play cornhole in yeah, January. All and 365 days. It's a little harder to perfect. play this time of year here, though. We could get it going in the office. The ceilings are high enough. Oh yeah, we could, we got oh for room. sure. You don't want to throw your cornhole bag that high anyways no you want to keep keep it low yeah keep your keep your bag low yep not a problem these days was it (laughs) all right was uh, it uh was it leah that posted uh on on twitter that it was 50 degrees in arizona and i was like wow thoughts and prayers yeah yeah poor poor (laughs) yeah my parents are in arizona right now it is 50 they were like just a couple hours north of uh scottsdale there's snow over there oh yeah well that's uh, so rough um, the planet's on fire, How could but you do it? anyways. Oh, it's tough. <laughs> it's so bad. Next up on our big board is defenseman Connor Murphy. He comes in at number six on our trade deadline big board. Um, I think this is like the Jake McCabe conversation. Copy-paste. <laughs> Copy-paste. <laughs> uh, maybe a slightly, a little bit less of a return perhaps, but well, very similar conversation. Well, so he's making uh, $0.4 million more per year than McCabe for one extra year. So he has it actually a team could look at it as a maybe a, a positive because they have an extra year of term at, at being cost controlled. And look like the teams that need defensive help are Toronto and Edmonton and Los Angeles is, is in play as well. Um, I, I, I think Murphy, Murphy and McCabe are similar, a little different, but similar enough to where, you know, you know exactly what you're going to get with those guys. Um, Connor Murphy hasn't played real Stanley Cup playoff games, and I know that he is uh, he is chomping at the bit to to get that experience. And yeah. I think he'd be a guy that could get into a, a contending team's rotation and be able to 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 step up to the to the plate in in that kind of elevated environment. Um, he's not the he's not the most physically imposing guy, but he definitely plays a physical style. He's not he's not one to usually get bumped around in front of the net and uh, you know om- everything outside of murder is a al- is allowed in the playoffs and Murphy and McCabe especially are, are two guys that uh can can play that style and I think teams would be uh interested in, in looking at um on the flip side the three years of, of of Murphy do you you could also look at that as a bad thing it could be like well we want him but we don't want him for that long and if a team is if a team it looks at it as a good thing, then that's good for the Blackhawks. But I, I think there's going to be fewer teams uh, chomping to get Murphy as there are uh, McCabe. Yeah, chronic back issues don't get better. Yes. Right. They've been fortunate that the the injury problems that he's been dealing with the past couple of years have not uh, reared their ugly head so far this season. But, yep. you know, it's only halfway through. I and mean, that's got to be a concern for any team. Um, you know, McCabe is another guy that can get – you know, he was, you know, had his problems last year. I mean, he had the surgery to help with the back and all that stuff. So those are obviously concerns. But, you know, if Connor Murphy is the missing piece to your Stanley Cup puzzle for this year, you'll deal with those other three years later. Sure. We used to have a guy here that worried about three years later, three <laughs> years from now. Or just didn't worry about it at all. Exactly. So it's like <laughs> if Connor Murphy is your last or if Jake McCabe is the, is the guy that you have to have that you think is the final piece of the puzzle, you're going to go get him. I just don't. I, I just don't see any team that that's that's the scenario at well, this point. At the same time, though, I can't look at a team that says we need help on defense that's affordable and good and find better value than those right. two guys. Right. It's going to be a team that thinks that they're not maybe they're contending this year, but also for the next two to three seasons as well. I mm-hmm. just can't. I Whenever I think of those two as trade assets, I think of what Johnny Oduya meant to the Hawks. Right. Yeah, because that was and, more than one season. Yeah, and he was not perfect. And when he came from New Jersey, it was like, well, you know, he's, he's like a four and eh. 
kind of iffy. You put him with Nicholas Jalmerson, and that dude is a lot better. Mm -hmm. And for both Murphy and McCabe to go to a contender, they're going to be paired with, well, McCabe's not with Seth Jones, but chances are they're going to be paired with a pretty good partner. Right. Right, and will therefore play their best hockey they've ever played. So if I'm a GM and I'm looking to bolster my defense, McCabe and Murphy are two of the first guys I'm inquiring about. Yeah, yeah. and and the, the the market will will definitely dictate um, what teams do. These, these those two guys are not the top defensemen available, um, but obviously, a, as with like Adomi or Nathanasiu and and Jonathan Taze as well, um, teams that miss out on the big guys yep. uh, are going to then potentially go down their list and be like, okay. We missed out on, for whatever reason, Vladislav Gavrikov is out there. I don't know. You can't convince me. But Chikrin. if we miss out on him or miss out on Chikrin, like, okay, we need to, we need to do something. Let's, let's see what we can do for a McCabe or a Murphy. Well, we, we look at Toronto. We look at Edmonton. What's been their problem for multiple years outside of goaltending? Management. <laughs> Obviously. No, I mean, on defense. the ice. With defense yes. and goaltending. Yeah. Stopping goals. It's, it's been a problem repeatedly every year we say the same thing about the Oilers the same thing about the Maple Leafs Jake McCabe or Connor Murphy solves that problem for the rest of this season and at least the next two mm -hmm. yep yeah I, then you don't have to then you don't have to spend another then you don't have to spend money on the free agency market for a defenseman the next next summer mm -hmm. you can focus right. on another need you need it it takes care of a need you need this season and in the off season, then you don't have to go out and get another defenseman because you traded for a rental. Mm -hmm. Well, the other thing too, from the Hawks' perspective, is it's I think it's easier for them to trade defensemen because they've got more guys they feel they can call up and play in the yeah. NHL level. Yeah. Forward wise, uh, it's iffy. Right, you'll you be, got Reichel who can come up. Uh, Luke Flip is here already. If, if they trade Slavin, if they trade the big four forwards. Reichel and his band of merry men come up. Like, Reichel, Cini, Gutman. Yeah. Loop. Luke Philp. Yeah. Slavin. Slavin, Tepley, you know, you Dylan it. Sakura. Hey. Let's do it. <laughs> come on back. Let's do um, it. Yeah, Way it's, back it, Wednesdays. There's definitely the young depth defensively that if Murphy and or McCabe are gone, you'll probably see Isaac Phillips full time yeah. up here to end the season. You might see the return of... Alec Regula or Alex Vlasic or Philip Roos gets back into the lineup, things like that. Yeah. Um, no, Roy says I would say McCabe is having a better season than Klingberg. There's no doubt that he's having a better year. Right, but and but again, that goes to the reputation, the sample size, and all that stuff. But Klingberg's a little more sexier because he puts up the offense. Yeah. He's way cheaper, though. Yeah. Way cheaper. Yep. Yeah. So And it's not a rental. Klingberg right. would be a rental. Right. McCabe, yeah. McCabe can solve problems for you. Multiple problems gets makes you better this season. Then you don't have to go shopping for a defenseman because you're not going to get a Jake McCabe on the open market this summer for four million dollars or you're two not, million, right? Hell no, or you two know? million, yeah, yeah exactly. Right. If you're retaining, and there and so there are two guys multiple problems for some of these teams, and there are two guys that are batshit crazy and love to block shots. Like that is that is an that is a Jake McCabe was made for playoff hockey playoff, for sure. Exactly. And he's never played it. Right. So playoff like, style defenseman. He is get that guy hockey. into a playoff game yeah. and get out of his way. He'll be the guy with you were talking about Charo at the end of the season injury list. <laughs> yeah. I have four broken legs, six pulled groins, yeah. one tooth left. I have no no ribs <laughs> intact, but I'm right. but yeah. I feel great and I'll be out there. All right, we've got two guys left on the list. Uh, we've got number seven. Sam Lafferty, whose name has uh, surfaced recently uh, with connection to the Maple Leafs. Yeah, uh, we're, we're really not trying to uh, make this a Blackhawks and Maple Leafs yeah, uh, show, Might but hey, click, look. Click, 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 click. <laughs> hey, look, the market is the market. <laughs> yeah, uh, Sam Lafferty, uh, I think he's, he's a lot like a Thanasiu, uh, but with a little bit more of uh, an edge to his game. Which, hey, Stanley Cup playoffs, you got to have an edge to your game to, to survive and succeed. So um, I th he's a guy that's fast, hard worker. Uh, you're not going to question his effort level on pretty much 99% of the games he plays. Um, we've seen a little bit more of an offensive jump in him this season, uh, which is great. And, and yeah, look, Toronto's a, a team that they need cheap guys that can bolster their depth. Um Lafferty is uh, got 
this season and next at $1.15 million. He is a depth guy who's very cheap, and I would say is probably worth a little bit more than $1.15 million, the way yeah. he's playing. So, yep. look, you got to add speed. You got to add some, some, some energy, some effort level. Uh, good character guy. That's why he's was uh, stuck around here in, in Chicago after being brought in last season. So, yeah, I think he, I think he's a guy that could, that could fit a lot of teams. And, and uh, Toronto was recently kind of paired together. So there, there's a guy that I think uh, could be one of those underrated moves that makes a difference. Good question from Bijan. Who has more trade value, Athanasiu or Lafferty? If I'm a GM, I'd Probably give up more Lafferty. for Lafferty. Yeah, because you get another year. And, and I, I just think yeah. he's more effective yeah. overall. I think yeah. so, too. Lafferty does a little bit more, where Anthony C. U. is a speed guy. He's fast. Yeah. He's fast. And uh, he's fast. <laughs> Lafferty is fast, but he also plays defense, can be on the penalty kill. Yeah. In fairness, though, Anthony C. U. is also fast. Yes, he's very, he's very fast. <laughs> yeah. That's what they tell me. But uh, and Yeah, and, and speedy. So. <laughs> <laughs> he's quick, too. Yeah. <laughs> quick and fast. Yeah. Um, I would be sad if Sam Lafferty... Got traded just because the "Don't Laugh with Lafferty" uh, segment <laughs> at the United Center is, is my favorite thing in years. <laughs> it's Sam Lafferty and somebody else on the Blackhawks, and they tell each it's other McKenzie awful. Whistle. But they've done a couple other guys. It's been more yeah, than, but, yeah, there's a few. But they so it's like Lafferty and McKenzie and Whistle, and they sit there and they tell each other bad dad jokes, and you get a point if you make the other guy laugh, yeah. and you just can't help but not laugh at every single oh, one of them, even though they're terrible jokes. They're, they're so, so bad. bad. Like, <laughs> that value alone should get you a first-round pick. <laughs> yes. to, to, we'll give you Sam Laverty and the rights to Don't Laugh with Laverty. Look, and you get a discount on his dental work because he's missing, like, eight teeth all in the yeah. front of his mouth. He's missing them all. <laughs> so, yeah, he's the I, hockeyest hockey player I, ever. I, yeah. I wouldn't... I, I like Sam Lafferty a lot for a lot of different reasons, but man, if there's somebody calling you looking to make it worth your while, you you obviously make that trade. And worth your while with Sam Lafferty is like, what's the ceiling? A fifth round pick? Oh, I wouldn't trade him for a fifth. No, I keep him for a fifth. You know, I would. I would. I don't think I would trade him for less than a third. I I don't think you're going to get that though. Then don't trade him. I won't trade him. Okay. You need you you need guys that can play. You got to have guys after the deadline and next year that can play. Yeah. And, and Lafferty could be one of those guys that maybe he sticks around past this contract if they don't sure. trade him. So if you want to trade him, I think, yeah, it's got you don't trade him just to trade him. Someone calls and says, we'll give you a fifth-round pick for Sam Lafferty. I, no thanks, but no thanks. Yeah, and, he was, and he was the first uh, first move of consequence of Kyle Davidson's uh, tenure as interim GM turned before he was well. a full-time GM. Yeah, turned out really well. They yep. return uh, on the... <laughs> The return on that trade has been through the roof, uh, pound for Listen, pound. Kyle Davidson has done pretty darn good on the trades. You know, I know people are going to say, hey, the Dembrinkit deal. Okay. He didn't get what we all thought he should have gotten, but he got what the market bared. You know, Kevin Kraczynski may make us all forget about yeah. that a few down the road. But you look at the Lafferty yeah. for Alex Nylander. That was a pretty good trade. Mm-hmm. Look, what, look what he got. He got Jason Dickinson and a second-round pick. For Riley Stillman, who has been a healthy scratch pretty much for the last month for mm-hmm. Vancouver. He can't even get on the ice. So you got a serviceable, yep. pretty darn good forward for your your team right now and a second-round pick mm-hmm. because they needed to clear that $2 million of cap space. They really needed that yep. cap space. Well, so they, they, they got to pay, yeah. pay Rick Tuckett. You, you got you to, gotta, you know, pay those coaches to not coach your so, team. Yeah, I mean, that's why going into this trade deadline, it's huge. For Kyle Davidson, but I, I I have some confidence in him. Like I think he'll he'll he's proven that he's not just going to take anything. We saw that with you know everybody thought Calvin DeHaan was a shoe in to get traded last yeah. year. Yeah, and he said I didn't get what I wanted for him, so it was just better to keep him. You know he didn't trade Kubalik or Strom when he could have because it just wasn't there. So yeah. you know Look, he has shown he will stick to his guns. That's all I want you know, out of my general manager. Yeah, like he's not going to be bullied by another GM. He's not going to be bullied by the media to do or fans to do. Like keep Lucas Reichel up. Nope, I want to lose. Mm-hmm. He's not coming up. He's, like it's, it's tough it's, to do that. It's a belief in your plan. It's very much betting on himself as as a, as a GM. And why not? And we said when he took over, a lot of what he was going to do was scrub the previous guy's name off the walls, and he's. He's doing that, and he's writing his own. Yeah. So that's props for that. All right, last guy on the list uh, coming in at number eight, goaltender Alex Stalock, who, as we know, has been uh, 
dealing with injury issues all year. Another uh, concussion um, suffered in practice. Uh, was it last week? Probably. Um, uh, yeah, about a week ago. It's it's tough. I mean, he's been great. He's really cheap. He's a great guy. Everybody loves him. Will he be healthy, and will a team be willing to yeah. give up an asset for a guy who might not be on the ice? I, yeah, I, that's the biggest That's the biggest issue. I can't yeah. see there being much of a market for him uh, at this point. I, if he never suffered that second concussion, I mean, you're talking two concussions within two months. It's not good. Um, so I, I can't see anybody really jumping over themselves for a guy that has essentially been a career backup. Um, yeah, he's looked good in the small sample size, but every time he gets into his groove, he's yeah. not there yeah. anymore. Not his fault. No, absolutely not his fault. Um, so I just don't see much of a market. He's a guy that, like, I would have zero issue if they brought back next year. No, Everybody sure, yeah. in that locker room loves him. You're going to probably go with another young goalie next year. You know, maybe you figure out something with Mrazek, a buyout or something like that. Um, you know, you've got nothing but cap space, so we'll, we'll, don't worry about it. Buy out Morazic's last year, mm-hmm. bring back Staylock on the cheap, and let him and, and Soderbloom be the one A one B next year, and go with it. Love it. You know, bring bring in another uh, veteran guy to be your AHL guy and emergency call up when you know if Staylock can't stay healthy. Well, Jackson Stauber will be around again. I think yeah, he's on a two year deal. Sure, but I, I like like you know, or bring in like one of those journeyman vet guys down there too that can Another also early stay lock. That could <laughs> that that knows he's gonna spend most of the year in the AHL yeah. and can be the vet down there as well. Because if you do have to bring up Jackson Stauber, you still need somebody that can some scramble around down there as is well. JF Barube available. I'm sure he you is, know. you know. They got you can never have too many viable goaltenders. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't hurt. The Hawks probably wish they had one of those veteran guys in the AHL this year with all the times they've had to, to get the shuffle going. But I just don't see anybody calling for Alex Stalock right now. Yeah, the, the injury concerns, the health concerns are, are definitely real. Um, I think if and concussions are, you know, they're their own case yeah. each time. You can't yeah. predict what a timeline is actually going to be. Yeah. Um, but if if he were to come back uh, before the deadline, put a couple games together where he looks like the guy that he has been all season, um, I think that would be great. And look, like there there are there are teams out there that could look at it and be like, well, we need we need a an, an insurance policy in that. And if Alex Stalock is if they feel like he could be healthy and he could be available. Seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars against the cap, like league minimum. Yeah, but that, that, that could no be. issues with with cap space. There um, is like for argument's sake, is Seattle convinced that Martin Jones is going to be able to take his sub nine hundred save percentage into the playoffs? Like, <laughs> I you know, and it I could be another so. one of those deals like to Han last year. Like, I'm not going to trade this guy just to trade him. Right, yeah. He may have a discussion. You know, Stalock is a family man. He's got two young kids. He may be like, I don't want to go anywhere. Like, so unless you get a, an amazing offer for him that you can't say no to, you know, maybe that's – he's he's a guy that everybody loves where they just go, we're not just going to trade him just to trade him. Right. It's not worth it. We're not going to have him pick unless, he, you know, something he wants to do. But, you know, we'll see. I, I would not expect a Alex an Alex Stalock trade yeah. to happen this Agreed. year. Uh, one quick – Thing, uh, Region Rev asking any update on Jujar Kara. No, uh, we have out. not seen him. He's dealing with another back injury again. Guys with back problems, they don't seem to go away. He, uh, he hasn't been even skating, not even before practices. Before I know he didn't go on the road trip, so I that's not anytime soon for him. Maybe after the bye week when they get back on the ice, we'll see him at least skating ahead of time. Maybe, but the fact yeah. that he's Hasn't even skated in the last two or three weeks. Tells me he's it's not anytime soon for him. Yeah, it's tough. Another uh, real good character guy. And you talk about deadline assets. That's the, a perfect kind of depth addition for a playoff team. Um, but most important is his health and him getting back to where he needs to be physically. So, right. all right, before we wrap up, we want to let everybody know our CHGO takeover is Friday, February 10th. We told you it was selling out quickly. We are down to single-digit tickets available. Mm-hmm. And that was as of, uh, what, like 10 this morning. This so morning. And you're going to want to jump on this. There's at least one ticket that is gone since then. So All right. So jump on this today. 
If you've been on the fence, you've got to get in here. Why do you want to join us? Well, you get a ticket to the game to see the Hawks and Coyotes at the United Center. You get a free CHGO hockey t-shirt, an exclusive brand new design that has not been available yet until this event. You're going to get a free drink uh, at the Goose Island uh, Brewery there in the United Center and the immaculate vibes of hanging out with the three of us and the CHGO Blackhawks fans. Uh, for an entire hockey game. It's going to be an awesome time. Go to allchgo.com for information. Remember, if you are a diehard, you save 20% on this and all CHGO events. You also save on all CHGO merch at the CHGO locker. And upon sign-up of of being a diehard, you get a free shirt or hat. And again, that happens every year upon renewal. So this deal pays for itself. You go to a tailgate, you go to a takeover, and you get your free shirt, it's pretty much paid for itself. So come join us February 10th. Get those tickets before they're gone, allchgo.com. And that takeover day on February 10th is one of just five home games left before the March 3rd trade deadline. So if we do eventually hear that Patrick Kane and Jonathan Taves do want to get traded, you've got five chances left to see them in a Blackhawks uniform. Uh, If you're a huge Max Domi fan, you may only have five chances left to see him. Well, if you want to go see any of those other five games, make sure you check out our friends at Game Time, the hottest new ticketing site that makes it easier than ever to score the best deals on tickets to sports, concerts, and shows. They will get you the tickets you thought you never could buy. You want to sit in the 200 level? Bam, that's the best spot in the arena. You want to sit closer? You want to sit right behind the Blackhawks bench? They got those for you, too, and they have the biggest last-minute price drops On the seats you thought you could never buy, you won't find a better deal on Blackhawks tickets this season. My advice to you is hold out as long as possible. Wait till game day to purchase those tickets because usually the prices drop on the day of the game. And if you see a price on a ticket on another one of these, you know, not as good sites as game time, let them know and they'll match that price. If you love CHGO, then you'll love game time. The best way to support us is by buying your tickets through the link in the podcast description. If you're watching on YouTube, hello, scroll down, hit that giant thumbs up button. And then right under that, you're going to see the link to click on to get your Blackhawks tickets or any tickets to whatever you want. If you're listening on any of our other great podcasts, Uh, platforms you'll see the link in that description as well so join over 15 million people who have used game time and score the best seats on all your favorite events all right with that we're going to wrap the show up we are back tomorrow night after hawks and calgary flames that puck drops at eight o'clock so not quite as late of a game as last night so make sure you join us on the post game show and reminder that we are presented by DraftKings sportsbook america's top rated sportsbook download the app use promo code chgo When you sign up on your way out, smash that like button for us. We'll talk to you Thursday night on the CHGO Blackhawks podcast.